you can tell I'm kind of inspired this evening because I always enjoy coming to these graduation events. They remind me of why I went to a PhD in the first place, decided to do that with my life. What I want to do now is, of course, to proceed to, I think, the heart of today's event, which is, of course, the handing out of the diplomas. Um, with the Majeska School, what I want each person to do when your name is called, um, when you come up to receive your diploma, or if you're on Zoom and your name is called, uh, make sure to just share with us a few words about the class, uh, what you found to be important about the Majeska School, what you found to be inspiring about it. And again, remember that this is all part of the participatory part of being part of the Majeska School. So when I call your name, please come up to receive your diploma. Or if you are on Zoom, uh, just make sure to unmute yourselves and give uh, a brief uh, word of encouragement for your fellow graduates and for yourself. All right, so the first person we have down uh, this afternoon to receive the diploma is Celine Carroza. Uh, could you please come up? Celine Carroza. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you had as much fun in the class as I did. Um, you wouldn't think that a class about activism and history, especially one as ugly as ours, would be fun, but it was. Um, I always find learning things fun. Um, again, my name is Celine Carroza. I uh, lived in South Carolina all my life. Um, I wanted to get more into activism because I hate seeing people suffer. <laughs> and uh, uh, I started a grant writing course and I was looking for um, local organizations to help. And uh, this one uh, seemed very appealing. And then I took the class and other than just learning about history, the thing that mattered the most to me was learning about all of you guys that there's solidarity in community, there's solidarity in fighting for equality. We have common goals and that doesn't just mean working together, it means living together, helping each other and knowing that you're not alone is super important to me and I hope it has been to you guys too. All right, up next is Katie Crosby. And she Hi, is everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on Zoom today. Um, sorry for my appearance, but I was at a rally this morning and spent the afternoon canvassing. Um, so I am just so grateful for everyone that I've met here and everything that I've learned. And, and like Celine said, you all just give me hope. I, I'm holding on to those bright spots throughout this terrible history where people came together and people fought together and they didn't give up. So you know what, that's all we've got to do, right? We've got to stay in the streets. We've got to stay on the phone. We've got to hold people accountable and we've got to band together and we cannot give up. So thank you. Thank you for all the hope that you all have given me. Thank you. Thank you. All right, up next um, for our graduation list, I actually see uh, Greg Howell is on the screen via Zoom. Greg, could you uh, mute briefly, please? Yes, well, thank you. I really enjoyed being a part of this class because it gave me a chance to you know, re reconnect with uh, my roots in South Carolina. And uh, you know, I still, even though I'm, I'm not living in South Carolina, South Carolina I still have family there and, and uh, you know, have, Deep her friends there and, and deep links, and uh, you know, and I carry probably, and sometimes not probably, my South Carolina's legacy with me. But it was really a pleasure to learn more about uh, South Carolina's South Carolina's legacy, and to meet all of the, the leaders, uh, uh, Brad and, and and Daniel that I met in person, and just with this group to to be able to experience this journey with you all. I see that there are people in South Carolina that are interested in making it better. And that are concerned about uh, the the, tra tra the trajectory that it's on, and who want actively try to you know, change that tra trajectory to make it uh, a fairer place for everyone. And again, I just encourage all of you, and and uh, and I hope one day to you know to be able to return you know, not to distant future and uh, and join you all in the fight for progress and to honor the legacy of uh, Majeska Simpkin and people like her. Thank you. Thank you.
Up next, also on Zoom, is Christina Eisenhower. Hi there, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry I could not be there in person. I'm still in uh, isolation from having COVID. So um, I'm glad to be here just out of safety. But uh, yeah, I mean, just to, to ditto what other folks have said, it's just been a really uh, important experience. Uh, I've told loved ones and friends that it's one of, I think, the most important experiences that I've ever done to be a part of this school. Born and raised here in South Carolina and learned so much about our state that I just um, had never been taught. And a special thank you to Dr. Green. I have uh, told many folks that um, even after uh, bachelor's and graduate, I think uh, you're one of the best professors that I have uh, had contact with and been able to have a privilege to have you teach uh, for me. So it's just been a wonderful experience. I too am very interested in this part of my life to be more uh, involved in the community uh, through advocacy and activism. Um, I think the biggest thing about going through the school is seeing the history of the progressive movement in South Carolina, because you just, when you see things that are happening all around us in South Carolina, you don't see that always. And so it does give me hope that there's a strong history of that movement here. Um, and while there are many days that I want to flee from this state for many reasons, it does give me hope that uh, we can stay and we can advocate um, and fight for our equitable future. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the kind words as well. Up next in person is Baba Derek Jackson. <laughs> See, and uh, Dr. Gorman are the reason I'm here. <laughs> for, they, for the last couple of years, they've been pushing me to come and, and be a part of this, and I'm glad they did. It gave me a sense of the resistance here in South Carolina. Because when I moved here in 79, many people thought there was no resistance other than the Orangeburg massacre in South Carolina. So Dr. Green, I thank you for profiling and giving focus to the resistance here in South Carolina. Many people in South Carolina don't know of that history. When you call it progressive, I'm just gonna say this, when you call it progressive, that sound a little weak to 20 year olds. But when you use the word resistance, <laughs> then they, okay, I wanna hear that. When you hear the word rebellion, <laughs> they wanna hear that. What they don't wanna hear is that we just acquiesce. And that would be my only comment. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of this. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Bernie. Thank you, Brett. Let me say this real quick. I got to say this about Brett. Brett was a legend in the barbershops of Columbia when I moved here in 79. You and Red Fern Deuce. <laughs> they could not mention Red Fern Deuce and didn't mention Brett Bercy. <laughs> so I wanted to know. I met Red Fern Deuce. Who's this guy, Brett Burst? Then Bernie took me down to your old print shop. <laughs> and that's when I first met you. So I, now I know the legend. <laughs> Brett Bursey, just know you're a legend in the barbershop. Some of it was true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, up next um, of those who are in attendance this afternoon uh, is Nicole McCune. Could Nicole please come up? Good 
Good afternoon, and I am just so honored to be here today. Um, and I was just so honored to have the opportunity to participate in this course. Um, it's been a long time coming for me. When I first heard about the Majestic Skinson School, I was a student at um, Midlands Technical College, and it was back in 2017. Um, I had some communication um, with um, Brad, and um, ideally during that time, um, you know, working and going to school, I just couldn't find the time to, to attend. So um, once I finished up, um, I took a journey and, you know, I wanted to be that person and citizen to, you know, stop talking about it, be about it, you know, just talk less and do more. So I took a journey to um, after a breast cancer diagnosis and I got better. I took a journey to Alabama, to Montgomery. Um, it just went down the civil rights trail and for a whole weekend and people would ask me, including my husband, why do you want to go there? Why, you know, why do you want to do that? But you know, when you have that passion to learn and educate yourself so that you can um, take your place and, to, and you know, be active and um, when it comes to race, equity, and um, justice. So that was, that's my goal. And that's what I, you know, I want to do. And I want to learn how, how, how do I do that? And when I'm in Alabama and I'm at these museums and I'm at all these places that's talking about Dr. Martin Luther King and uh, Rosa Parks, then I come across names like Majeska Skimpkins and uh, Sarah Mae Fleming in Alabama. And I'm like, what am I doing here? I, you know, everything is right in South Carolina. Uh, so again, at that time, um, you know, I was able to reach back out and say, oh, the, this, the, you know, the Majestic Second School. And so it was, it was just an honor, it just all came into place. And again, I'm just so excited um, to have met and been in a course um, with, with so many people. Dr. Green, um, I was just, uh, just amazed with what I've learned. Um, it was a wealth of information and I'm just excited about the future and my role in taking a place and doing um, more and working on projects. And I'm, and I'm hoping I can connect with some of you to do that and just to make South Carolina better and, and, and what we're all here for. So thank you again to everybody. <laughs> All right. Okay. Up next is Chris McLaughlin. Uh, hi. Um, so I'm originally from New York. And so I uh, moved down here in 2014 to go to grad school. And ever since then, I've sort of told people that I always feel like I'm on an anthropological expedition of sorts. Uh, just, you know, trying to get a sense of the state and just the South in general. Um, and every year I've been here, I've learned just how much more diverse and deep all the culture here is and the history. Um, it's, yeah, because being from New York, the South is seen as this sort of monolith, uh, and obviously that is not the case. Uh, there's a deep, deep history of uh, resistance and rebellion here, and I've wanted to take this course for years and just sort of never had time. Uh, it's been involved in a multitude of things, uh, but this was the year it finally lined up, and I got to actually dig into some of the, you know, deep history and roots and uh, I don't know. It was it was really really interesting, and it was great to get to see Dr. Green uh, teach such a diverse class and really be able to keep us all on task while also building community as a teacher. And I think that was fantastic. So thank you so much. All right. Now, up next is Donald Murphy via Zoom. Hi, um, I'd like to thank the Academy for this award. Oh, I'm sorry, that's the wrong speech. Uh, huh. I enjoyed the course. I learned so much and I saw how ignorant I was about so many things. I had been a victim or um, 
a willing participant in the um, standard society's mishmash of information. So this was eye-opening for me. And I very much appreciated Dr. Green for facilitating the conversations and assigning the readings and Brett for um, being um, a force of stability for so many years. His constancy of purpose and his um, commitment was very inspiring. And Becky for bringing in the, um, the feeling side of things and having us connect with our, our, um, our emotions. It was, I found that very touching. And uh, Daniel for being uh, an expert IT person and coordinator. Um, so I, I just um, was thrilled to be in the course. I learned so much. I didn't read everything, so I have more readings to do, but it was, it was just an astonishing course. And I thank you for your time and uh, your commitment to furthering justice. Thank you for joining us. And these testimonies are precisely the reason why I enjoy doing this school every year, because again, it's always fascinating to learn what folks have actually learned from the course. And a big part of that is not just the history, not just the reading, but is the comradeship that we're seeing on display, even via the virtual world. So again, I really, really appreciate these comments. Up next is Alan Sattler. Alan, come on up. Thank you. Um, I, I, I do want to say thanks to all of the uh, instructors that we had and all of the guests that um, came to our classes. Um, I did manage to sit through every hour of every class <laughs> without missing anything. Um, so I thought that was a big deal just by itself. <laughs> but um, uh, I learned a, a real lot of stuff. I, I first came to South Carolina 35 years ago, and a lot of this stuff was just not even on my radar until I got involved with this class. Uh, Keith, a friend of mine, took this a couple years ago, and I met some of you at his graduation, and um, it inspired me to want to try to get involved with this also. But my biggest thing out of this class that I would like to see happen, I would like to see this course become required for every student in South Carolina. I think it's that important. Thank you. Originally from Connecticut. Lancaster. Lancaster. Up next on our list is uh, Keitha Whitaker, who is coming to us via Zoom. Hi, everybody. Uh, this has been an inspiring and awesome class for me. I first learned about um, South Carolina Progressive Network. Excuse me when working with the Missing Voter Project and working at the polls. Um, and I heard about the class, but I didn't, um, I guess I didn't pay that much attention to it. Learning about real history, real history, um, through, mostly through Lies My Teacher Told Me, it's a really excellent book and I, used to make it required reading for my um, social work classes that I taught as an adjunct instructor. But this class has been unique. This, this is just a unique experience among all my life experiences, learning the real history and seeing the people who've made that history and who are still making that history has been awe inspiring. And my new mantra is, you need to take that Majeska Simpkins course. 
you need to take that Jessica Simpkins course because it hasn't just been about history. It's been about activism. It's been about being involved in ways that you can make a difference because it's so frustrating looking out there these days and seeing, you know, what difference can I make? Look at all the messes going on. But this class has been pivotal in showing me that even as an immunocompromised individual who is well into her 70s, um, I can still make a difference. There are still things I can do. I can still organize and participate. And I appreciate that so much. And I really wish I was there to get a hug from Marjorie. Thank Marjorie, you so much. This Truly is for hard. you. All right, up next. I'm going to uh, give her a hug for me. Definitely will do. <laughs> up next is Chris Cuny. You don't mind if you can. My name is Chris. I started working with Fred around 1984 and have been involved in some demonstrations along with at least one fella in this room. I actually have the honor of having been prosecuted by um, uh, Mr. Governor McMaster. I was one, we were one of the few cases he wanted to prosecute personally. Majeska um, put up our bond and got us out of jail. And we actually missed the last live Clash concert in Atlanta <laughs> because we didn't get permission from the court to leave the state. And rather than, uh, risk putting her in any peril. We uh, stayed home, listened to albums. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've enjoyed the class. That's wonderful what the Progressive Network has put together and how it's evolved. I'm very uh, honored to be part of this group. Thank you for those powerful words. Up next, um, we have uh, Ansha Wild, who is coming in via Zoom. And after she's done speaking, I will read out the names of those who are not able, not able to make it this afternoon. So uh, Ansha Wild, you're up next. Give me one second, please. I apologize. <laughs> oh, no worries. <laughs> Just a, a quick word, by the way. Um, Again, I think what everyone has said here and what we've seen this afternoon is indicative of what the Majesta School is all about, that we have folks who are from across South Carolina, who are from across the country, who are all being brought together by a shared sense of really living out what it means to be a true citizen in this country, not just going along day to day, just trying to make ends meet, but trying to make this a better place for not just ourselves, but for our children and our children's children as well. And again, this is, this is my favorite part of the school every year is really hearing from folks about what they've learned from the class and what they plan to do afterwards as well. I'm sorry, I 
apologize for any clutter you hear. My family's gathered around everywhere in here right now. I'm sorry. Um, I just want to say thank you so much for allowing me to do the program. I actually wanted to do the program since I finished undergrad. Um, one of my undergraduate professors introduced me to the program and the Progressive Network, and I like fell in love with it. So um, thank you so much. I'm actually excited to get started with the um, voting program that you all have, and I'm also excited to get um involved with other things that i discussed with um the class um the other day so thank you so much thank you all right so what i want to do now um is to go ahead and read the names of those who were not able to make it this afternoon and then I'll invite Brett Bercy up to give us a few words of encouragement. There are, there are many other people on the women, but I'm the only two that haven't here are Russell and Karen and Paul. The only two that aren't here. Don't talk to them. Well, I talk to them. I talk to them. Even when I call them. Okay, now before I get to that, uh, I want to ask Constance Quirk to call, also come up, please, uh, as well. So, Constance, could you please join us at the front? I got my certificate in the mail, so it won't be in that for some reason. It came in the mail. <laughs> um, I go by Connie. Um, my husband and I moved here to South Carolina in 2017. I, we had come from Georgia. I had lived in Sumter um, when I was 13 through 16 in the early 60s because my father was in the service and we were stationed at Shaw and lived in Sumter. I knew some of the history. I mean, it was a real eye opener to move to the South for the first time when you're 13. Um, I'd never seen three bathrooms at every gas station, two side-by-side -side water fountains. I remember my siblings and I being really curious as to why that was. Um, and my older brother, who was a year older than I am, he was in the first class at Edmonds High School that was integrated. Um, and that I only was there for half a year. We got moved and he stayed. Um, I have really enjoyed learning this course, although a lot of the stuff that you hear in the history is pretty difficult to, to take. I mean, we already know in our own minds and what we've learned that things are really have been really miserable, but sometimes not as often as when you really see it and hear it and learn about it. And we are in a time, I am a retired school teacher. We are in a time where um, we're being told not to teach the true story, to teach a falsehood. And we do have to fight against that. Um, my husband and I, kind of became the co-chairs of the social action committee at the Unitarian Universalist Church, which is one of the reasons I took this course, because I needed to know we've been going to rallies and going um, and lobbying and things like that, but I wanted to know more about the history of South Carolina if we were going to get really, really involved. So this has been a real, um, I can't say joy to, to <laughs> to learn it all, but it is an eye opener and we do need to get the story out there to more people. And the one thing with everything that's going on, I have a tendency to get kind of down. How are you gonna make a difference? So knowing that we can all do this together, that one little pocket can't, but if we all can get united, then we can make a huge difference. A difference has been made we're losing ground, we can make it back. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I wanna go ahead and read the names of those who were not able to join us this afternoon. Of course, I do also wanna say, if you are actually here, please come on up and receive your diploma. I know there is some miscommunication between who would be here, who wouldn't be here, but stuff happens. All right, so um, I want to just recognize these folks who weren't able to make it because, again, we were all in this together as a team. Uh, first off, with uh, Russell Bannon, 
um, who I think is actually organizing right now, as a matter of fact, he's doing some work out there. Um, Valerie Bird Fort, um, who was also a graduate of the class. Um, Nicole Freeman, is Nicole here? Um, Donna Jones, is Donna here? Rihanna Klancic, um, Ali Patonic, and Joseph Tolliver, and Joanne Turner. These were all fellow graduates of the Majestic School. Please give them a round of applause as well. Okay, so up next, I wanna turn the floor over to who we can now refer to, of course, as the man, the myth, and the legend, Brett Bercy. Although I will say, I think Brett is one of those individuals who is much greater as a man than he is as a legend. And we are all blessed to have him here with us this afternoon. Brett? I couldn't have designed Dr. Green if I had central casting. He's just, he's been an absolute blessing to find somebody that's an incredible academic that could move right up through his profession if he didn't have an assessment of what's wrong in this country and willing to speak about it. And so Dr. Green, we are very fortunate that you share those values with us. And I, I have been toiling in this vineyard for an awfully long time now. I was first here in 68 as an organizer for the Southern Student Organizing Committee, which was formed for the white people at SNCC in 64. And it has been a lonely duty station, I want to tell you. And part of that is because of the myths that you learn, reading about the people's history in South Carolina, about happy, happy, happy people here. That is, I think, unique in every state, the way it's been played out. And what is really unique about the work that we're doing with the South Carolina Progressive Network is the benefit of having learned from a lot of people that fell on holes before we did. That's one of the benefits of being behind. You get to see where the holes are. But I mean, I, I was at the, the um, um, Lord, I just blanked on the one, the, the, the organizing school in, in Tennessee, the, say it again. Uh, the Highlander, of course. I was there when I was working for SOC in the 60s, and it had just been burned down. And so Highlander's been rebuilt. We've been there a number of times. There's the Center for Third World Organizing in California. There's Blue Mountain. There's one in New York. There's one in Wyoming, Wincall, that teach people what Howard Zinn taught people, which is the history of the people of the United States of America. And then they'd go home to the state that they're from, and they'd trying to figure out how that worked there. So we started with the people's history of South Carolina because this is where we work. This is where our feet touch the ground. And we can't change DC until we change SC. You may know that if, 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 if we, they, them, the people that run the, the majority of the Senate right now, barely, barely, if they lose that, you know who's gonna be in charge of the Senate Judiciary Committee? Lindsey Graham. Lindsey Graham. And so I've been telling the national funders that y'all can do spend all your money, do all you want to do to hold Congress and the White House. But as long as you ignore the South and we keep sending these fools to represent us, it's not going to work. And so I think we're making some headway on that because the Majeska School is being recognized as a, as a one-off. And people are very impressed with it. The people, the Zen Project, which was the foundation that Howard had started, he didn't call it the Zen Project, I don't think, but Howard Zinn spoke at an event that AWARE organized at the university in 1969. And so there's, there's a long, large troop of people that understand that which it is that we're talking about. We're not connected. There is reasons we're not connected that I think everybody's starting to understand more clearly, but that we have the advantage of having a small state with um, a lot of people that have, that, that the history that we were reaching back and touching is history that has been lived. I spent the, the last nearly 20 years of Justice life with her. And so when I hear the word progressive, which sounds like something Bernie Sanders came up with, I now know, I now know that the, that the delegation of people of color that were refused to be seated at the Democratic National Convention was not Fannie Lou Hamer's Mississippi Freedom Party in 1964. It was the South Carolina Progressive Democratic Party organized by Majeska Sipkins and her friends in 1944, 20 years before that, nobody knows that, 
Why does nobody know that? Because they've been lying to us on purpose for reasons to protect their privilege. And what we learn is that, by golly, it looks like these rules were made as the original intent and vision of the founding fathers. The aspirations, the document, all men are created equal. Didn't miss, you know, missed a point there, but the document was aspirational. The founding fathers warned against, don't start parties, you'll end up with two that fight amongst themselves for money and power. And Jefferson, Jefferson said, God forbid we shall not strangle the moneyed corporations in their infancy, they yet bid defiance to our elected governments. So we have parties that are owned by corporations, the two things we were warned about, and no wonder, no wonder, we're the only industrialized democracy that doesn't have healthcare as a right, it doesn't have education, doesn't have childcare, doesn't have kindergartens, doesn't have schools that teach the truth. Now, what we're losing there is building this larger class of people that some of them are really angry and they don't know who to be angry at. Because the, what, there's another myth that we learned. It's about the myth of the middle class. What's the middle class? Those are people that benefit from privilege by being acquiescent to the people that own things. If you've got a salary, you're not an owner. And trust me, the people that run the show own things. They don't even work. Their money works for them. And so the myth of the middle class started dissipating a long time ago, 1970s was when I read the myth of the middle class, the deindustrialization of America, Reagan coming in. And now we have a circumstance where it's really starting to piss people off about healthcare and the lack of education. But at the same time, we've got people like the people that want to be superintendent of education in the state that are against public education. The very real chance, we are on the cusp of going even further backwards. So we're at a really profound time in American history. And one of, one of the things that we teach in the Majeska School is we don't right now have the power to make things happen. We have to be clever enough to prepare to take advantage of opportunities and we can get something done every once in a while. Mr. Trump and his friends were a tremendous opportunity that we're not really quite prepared for. So we're all gonna to have to buckle down and create that community of shared values that Dr. King talked about to support each other as we, if nothing else, bank the coals and keep the spirit alive because they, it, it can get worse and um, I don't wanna postulate about that. But I do want to thank all of you for the, the class now, for those of you that weren't in it, this class grew to 18 Mondays and the three Sundays for him. That was not the intention when we started the school. It wasn't supposed to be just this graduate level thing that lasts for months. Though we may keep that up, we've got to start doing short courses. We've got to short, start doing things. The idea when we started the school was we were going to teach teachers and we we're going to teach them to go out into schools and classes and churches and whatnot and spread the message. We're still working on that, but everybody that's a graduate, past graduates, present graduates, realize that you've got to, we want to give you the tools to be able to spread the word. And that as we move forward into the spring, the thing that I've been trying to do is to replace myself. And Becky, Becky Robbins, the woman that, that has been the communications director for 31 years of our operation, and um, my wife for only, for only 15. And those of you that think I'm actually have, I'm, I'm capable of things, don't know Becky because she's the one that uh, occasionally makes me sound competent. But uh, I'll introduce the other players in the game here in a second. But what, what, where we are now is ensuring that there's something to carry this on. This building belongs to the C3 that we started. <laughs> we put our home up to buy it. And this building is your building, damn it. You've got to help pay the bills. Now, a movement that's popular means you want to be part of it. And if you own something, that means you're going to help pay the bills. And Marge is waving a bucket around. And one of the problems is that I, I, I learned in a, early in the game that money was the root of all evil, it was corruption, greed was, you know, capitalism was institutionalized greed. And so I have this really bad attitude about money that's really damaged us in terms of my working so cheap and people around me not having any money. We can't replace ourselves. So we really do need people to pitch in like a few bucks a month on a regular basis to help pay the mortgage, keep the thing alive. We've got some really good people to help sustaining it, but um, it's a time for us to come out of the box. Nothing's working, folks. The Democratic Party is going in circles. The Republican Party has gone off the, off the ledge. And all of a sudden, we're like the reasonable voice in the room. We're no longer the left, you know, we're no longer the radical fringe. And because we are, have been, 
we are and have been saying what is truth and rational and what we learned about the aspirations of the founding fathers and what we learned in whatever denomination it was that we grew up in or whatever pantheistic tree we worshiped, there is more to life than acquisition and greed. And that is where we live now and we've got to make a change. And so God bless you all. Let me recognize some of the people that helped make this work. Uh, Marjorie Hammock, wave your hand, Marjorie. Marjorie. And Kyle Kreminger, Kyle, stand up, are the co-chairs of the C3. And the C3 is the policy institute that you can make large donations to. You can leave your stock, you can do your 401k rollovers to the C3 and get a tax deduction. We can do no electoral work. The, the C3 is the sponsor of the Majeska School. The Majeska School has never gotten a grant. Not because we don't want one or need one, it's just we don't have somebody writing grants. And that the um, work that the C3 does and will continue to do hopefully is the Majeska School and raising money and helping train people to do the type of policy work that we've been doing for so long. But with the advantage of being able to have Joe Neal and Gilda Cobb Hunter, the first progressive legislators in South Carolina that won in 1992, we were already on the ground at, at, at Grove since 78 when they were elected. So it was like, hooray, and we bonded with them and they helped start the progressive network. One of the young mentees that came in right after that was this young guy from Jasper County named Clementa Pinckney. And we had a really, really dynamic group of people and I'm doing research, writing legislation, getting things passed. There's nobody doing that. But we figured out how to get around the legislature, how to do things administratively or through regulations. We have an incredible tool that I think that we've got to pass on. Working with some friends at the law school to create some type of internship for credit for young, young, young law students to be able to continue this work. And that the C4 is that the, um, the individual members, which if you leave today would not be a member of the C4, you're gonna find that your battery has been stolen out of your car. And so Alan drives a Tesla with lots of batteries in it. So Alan, but Alan's, Alan's paid his dues. People, th people think that it's because they go to the school, they're members. We've never made membership be a requirement, but we do want it to be a compulsion and you feel really bad about it if you don't do it. But the, so that the C4 uh, chairs or Omari Fox, is Omari still in the room? The mysterious Mr. Fox. And uh, his co is Carol Singletary. And Miss Singletary is Zooming. She's what? Zooming. Zooming. Is she she's still there? Oh, she's waving her hand. Carol, you want to say something? Well, she can butt in. We won't wait on her. So I do want to mention that the next next staff person, not staff person, but we couldn't pay her if she was, a person that does more work than a staff person would do is Shannon Heron. Shannon, stand up and wave. Shannon <laughs> thought she was retired as a school teacher, and she came to the Majeska School. I saw Richard pop in and out. Did he? He popped. He's still in. And Richard was going to drop her off because he didn't have any interest in this stuff. And Richard got hooked. Richard stayed. And so we have a couple there that are both graduates. And Shannon has learned how to do QuickBooks and all kinds of things to try and keep us uh, on the side of legality with money. We'll go to jail for any number of reasons, but money is not going to be one of them. <laughs> and see, who else do we have here? Secretary, that's Treasurer. And uh, Daniel, who are, you, who are you pointing at, Becky? Becky Robbins is the communication director, but now we're down to staff. I'm looking at officers. And Michael Gooding is going to be a direct board on the board of directors of the C4. I'm not sure he has had that announcement yet. Look, Michael is another person that I made up. I made up in my mind and manifested. Michael. Michael knows how to use a hammer. Michael knows how to protest. Michael knows politics. Michael knows. Michael's one of us people that were at Grow. Michael ran the Grow Cafe for three years. Michael got arrested protesting nuclear reactors. And Michael came here and did most of the work that you see that turned this building from a basically a 1960 clothes hanger for drop off, dropping off dirty clothes into what we have today. And so thank you, Michael Gooding. <laughs> I'm going to say it so we have it on record. Michael has agreed to be the manager. We haven't even determined the, the made up the word yet, but he's going to he's going to run this building. 
And so there's going to have to be somebody that's in charge of just the building in general. Then there's going to be people that work with the cafe to monetize it. There are going to be people that help do find out what movies we're having. We need to use this building all the time. Michael's going to help keep those books. And as far as the others, the staff goes through the people that are officers. These are people that we try and get do as much as we can get them to do, and we don't pay them. And the one that I hadn't mentioned yet is Dr. Bernie Gallman. Dr. Gallman, oh, there he is. Stand up so people can see you. And Dr. Gallman has a couple of words to say. Dr. Gallman always has. I do. He does. He does. <laughs> and Dr. Gallman has been brought in to help broaden the scope of the of the. Uh, People's, not just the people's history, but South Carolina, South Carolina people's history that goes back before South Carolina. Well, a few words, a few words, Doctor. Knowing Brett uh, for as long as I have, um, Brett was the hookup that I had when I used to get um, articles printed to pass out in the public that uh, people might not have known and many people might not have wanted to for it to get known. And um, through my association with Brett, I came to find out what, well, let me tell you a story. Um, uh -oh. That was a, that was a, on, on Columbus day, we uh, got a group of people together to tell the truth about who Cristobal Colon really was. And uh, the, the Knights of Columbus uh, were um, having these big uh, celebrations and we got these pamphlets printed in goldenrod. I mean, beautiful goldenrod. And we got uh, Brett to print them up. And uh, at the celebration at the park, when the park was worth going to, um, we put them on the, the windshields of every car in the vicinity. Um, we must have printed probably close to a thousand and um, probably about 10 years later, I had a patient come into my office with one of those goldenrod flyers and said, Dr. Goldman, have you seen this? You really need to see this. <laughs> so it's, it's effective. <laughs> Um, and uh, one of my primary interests is the history of people of African origin wherever we are in the diaspora. And um, that's one of the things that Brett has uh, allowed me and is, is, con is continuously prodding me to do more, but I've not had the opportunity to, but um, this is a good organization, and I would estimate that before we leave today, looking at the prosperous faces in this room, that we should raise at least $2,500. <laughs> and 10% goes to Dr. Gomez Relief Fund. Thank you. And wanted to now introduce uh, the people that are working with us in other capacities. And um, Cecil Cahoon is, uh, is one of our, we're, we've been reorganizing the network. During the time that we were in the pandemic, we were doing introspection and reorganizing ourselves to be more effective. Uh, things have changed. We need to change with it. If your tactics and strategies don't fit where your feet touch the ground, you're not gonna possibly make a difference. And so we've had to regroove some things and we're bringing in more directors, boards of directors uh, to bring in some fresh blood and leadership. And now uh, the, the people that are on the board now include Dr. Gallman, Cecil Cahoon, who's not here. Cecil's a, um, uh, a, a union organizer for the National Education Association has been traveling the South for 17 years, working with C3s and C4s in the educational arena that are getting beat up just like we are here. And Cecil's a real, a real blessing. April Lott uh, is a social security worker, federal social security worker in Charleston, president of her local union, president of the regional union with the nine locals. And she's now the vice president of the state AFL-CIO and the sharpest knife they've had in that drawer in a long time. And um, Russell Bannon, who you heard mentioned earlier, is 
uh, South Spartanburgian uh, who has uh, been working as an organizer. He's now with the U.S. Steelworkers in uh, Kershaw County trying to organize a, uh, a very predatory uh, uh, international tire company that um, is predatory. We'll talk about that later. So those are the directors that have come in and that the um, uh, people that are helping out other than Becky and I is uh, Daniel Louise. Where'd Daniel go? There's Daniel. Say hello, Daniel. And Daniel almost turned down something that I told him he would be an absolute fool to turn down, a scholarship to the new school in, in New York City that he's taken off in a couple of weeks for. That said, it's not what you learn in the school, it's what you learn in the hallways and in the contacts you can make in Manhattan that will last a lifetime. <laughs> Daniel, you want to say a couple words to the folks before you leave? Nothing larger than three syllables, please, Daniel. So I've, past couple months here, I've been working with Kurt, my colleague, and we've been having serious debates about what we need to do, right? And so I, I think, of course, there's the necessity of transforming society, as it were, but I think and perhaps Kurt will dispute me here later. I think the left, we also need to transform our, ourselves. There's been these repeated strategies since the 30s and the 60s. We've become dependent on a party that, as Brett said, has been going in circles. And so I think in order for us to transform the world, first the left is gonna to have to transform itself. So you can argue with me afterwards, but I say, you know, let's party like it's 1789 from now. <laughs> Thank you, Daniel. And over here is, is, is Chris Gardner, who is always very helpful. Even when, even when he doesn't know what he's supposed to do, he will try and do it and do his best job. I think he has nothing to say. He's a man of few words, but I want you to speak to Chris later. Michael, you got anything to say? Okay. And back there standing by the doorway is the uh, company chef, Joe Turkley. And Joe, Joe is living proof of what we say in terms of your role and the revolution, your role in the new society is where you're good. I mean, you, you be, every army needs a chef and we need school teachers and we need medics, we need people that can count money. So there's not enough organizing jobs and money for everybody to quit their job and become an organizer. But you can be an organizer within your own circle, within your school, your club, your family, your neighborhood, et cetera, but keep your day job. And, and, and Joe is, is a blessing. He's made dinner for us this evening, which we'll get to here in a minute. And um, Kurt Shumate, my friend, my friend from Myrtle Beach. I remember sitting in a motel room drinking a bottle of wine late one night with Kurt. And, uh, and Kurt's going to be filling in uh, for Daniel when Daniel takes off to Manhattan for six months. A couple words, Kurt. There's a lot of, everybody who knows me knows that a couple words is hard for me. So I usually just stay quiet. Otherwise it'll be forever. Um, uh, it's, it feels good to be home. I've been uh, doing some other work for the last couple of years, but uh, where I have physically uh, left uh, sometimes, my heart has always been with the network and uh, I've also, also physically been here <laughs> as well too, borrowing spaces and chairs and so forth. So it feels really, really good um, to know I'm coming back and uh, I'm really happy to see how packed this room is and I'm hoping to pack, help pack it out even more um, in the future. So uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Thank you, Kurt. And wanted to recognize Wayne Borders, the always beautiful and present Wayne, who is a former XCOM member, but also a volunteer that is really quite capable and has social skills to die for. Thank you, Wayne. <laughs> My mom would be very proud to hear that. Uh, I too am blown away by just the ever continuing success of the Majeska School. Uh, being among the, that first cohort of graduates and just the power within that course, because that power is in the history of this state is so beautiful to see that it is not being forgotten. 
that we know where we came from and what where where we started. So I love the grounding and I appreciate seeing everybody here. Uh, bring us more new, bring us more young people. Uh, the new legacy project, uh, something that Daniel started with myself and Kyle here. I'm sure that got mentioned. Yeah, uh, we'd love to do more. We need to do more because there's more fight. There's more fight coming. Indeedy. Thank you, Wayne. And have I recognized everybody that I honestly should have recognized because I should know who the officers are who, oh, Sarah, Sarah Williams. Sarah Williams, who has command capability. Sarah's been, um, uh, she's a, a full-fledged junior one, all the, all the degrees you can get nurse sort of person who's been serving in the army and she's now serving as a grandmother. Sarah, stand up, can you stand up? There you go. And Sarah is somebody that we've referred to for a great long time as a union maid. And that is uh, M-A-D-E, she's union maid, and she can be a union maid because she's willing to do whatever needs to be done. Thank you very much, Sarah. She's off to, she's, I think she's off to Ireland. Sarah hangs out in all of the clubs all over <laughs> Columbia and sings rather good jazz. <laughs> And I want to recognize that Sheila Haney is here. Sheila has been putting whatever fortunes she can find in the Abernathy McCauley, McCahey, McCahey, the Abernathy McCahey Foundation, and has been a benefactor that has brought us many of the things you see that have made the school look different than it did in 1960. And we thank you so much, Sheila. She's, Sheila is a retired professor from Coker in Hartsville and drove down here from Hartsville. And she remembers the time I used to drive to Hartsville and talk to people. That's one of the things that I've done that I learned from Majeska is you go to where people live and talk to them. And I did that. I quit going to Greenville after going to progressive network meetings for 10 years and found myself being the only one attending them at, at year 10 or so. And so I did right off Greenville. But it's getting out and talking to people that I'm hoping as the pandemic wanes, we can do more of. And that is about, I think, all the recognitions we have other than expressing extreme appreciation for our continued existence. And I wanna tell you that we're gonna have, uh, we're gonna tell our Zoom people goodbye because we don't want you to watch us having a good time. We're getting ready to drink and party. And so you can do that, uh, but we're gonna, we're going to now uh, play a closing note and Shannon's got something to say. It was, I'm sure, an oversight that the microphone was not available when I was introduced. <laughs> I thought now, you were being awfully shy. Uh -huh. So this, the microphone is now in my hand. Thank you. Sacré bleu. All right. Um, there is so much love and hope in this room through this class. And from everyone we heard from on Zoom, Hearts are here, minds are alive, and I need to talk to you seriously about the joy of giving. <laughs> I'm serious. It's a simple act by going online, put your wallet in where your heart is, because just like we all stick together, all of our money needs to stick together too. It's important. So I will, it's not just Marjorie being cute holding the bucket, although she is, <laughs> but I will be going through that bucket. I will be making an announcements throughout this evening tonight. For me, it's a fundraiser because there are needs. So I'll let you know how you're doing as a class. Um, I'm class of 2017, so we can do better than them. I can't remember them out, but I know we'll do better than them. So, and I want to thank everyone who pulled this space together. I had a five hour accounting session here on Wednesday and this building did not look like this. You have worked <laughs> a miracle. It looks amazing. It's so joyful to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Shannon. I told you she's worth everything we don't pay her. We did recognize Richard. Richard, Richard has, Richard. And I and just Richard, say, Richard we, we've tried to pay Richard because he's been really helpful. He's refused to take our money, which is a mark of, mark of character that we need.
So I want to tell you that we're going to wrap this up. We've got a closing, brief closing tune I found and found very interesting. And then we're going to, uh, is uh, Mr. Cheek in the room? Mar Our saxophone player. Oh, and that, so, you know, we're going to have a little uh, jazz while it's only 5.30 and we're going to, let's hang and socialize and give Joe time to get the meal ready and we'll, he'll, he'll say when it's time to eat. But let's not move straight to the eating. Um, but let's let's we have beverages. Joe, tell people where things are. Well, uh, we had uh, a request for a Mexican style buffet, so we got some really nice black beans, some um, And, and where is the bar, sir? The bar? Um, I believe the bar is right Thank you, sir. And Daniel, I understand we need a revolution. So I've heard, Mr. Gardner. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Dr. Green had a couple of remarks before we play that. I'll just make this very brief. Of course, this weekend is Fourth of July weekend. It's also the anniversary of the battles of Gettysburg and Vicksburg. In a couple of weeks, we have the Bastille Day in France. A couple of weeks ago, we had Juneteenth. In short, what I'm saying is this is a class dedicated to freedom, to justice, to freedom for everyone, regardless of race, creed, color, sexual orientation, and so forth. But above all, I hope that we remember today that we have a lot to look forward to working together as comrades in arms. And indeed, as you're gonna hear soon enough, it is indeed time for a revolution. So thank you again for being here and we'll fellowship together.